What is up, everyone, and welcome back to the internet's favorite football betting show, Cash Ball Week 14. If you remember last week, uh, the last couple weeks, we've been in a cold slump, a uh, cold streak we're trying to get out of. Did some voodoo, and it kind of worked this week. 3 0 in NFL, no big deal, humble brag. And then we went one and two in college. So we're getting back on the horse. We're making the adjustments. We're fucking fighting. And if you're crunching the numbers, you'll know that I am 22 and 17 for NFL in the season. Excuse me. Season. In college, we are batting 500, 18, 18, and three. Let's get back on the money side. Let's get back to work this week. I'm feeling real good, kind of mixing small ball with our new kind of boil it down to basic strategy. I'm excited. Let's go over last week's picks. First up, we have Boston College plus six and a half at Virginia. We like this one because Virginia was good with injuries. Boston College, unfortunately, is good, but not that good. Virginia... Somehow played their ass off with that lefty QB, Mini Tebow. Virginia got the best of them. We're going to make note of that for next week's picks. Next up, we had the Dogs, Fresno State, plus 7.5 versus Nevada. Or at Nevada, rather. This one was kind of a bullshit game. The Dogs got hit with COVID late. Nevada's good, but not that good. Dogs couldn't cover. Psh, get that corn out of my face. And the last one, roll goddamn tide. Bama minus 28 and a half at LSU. That number was scary, but Bama is a fucking juggernaut this year. Max Jones for Heisman. Just kidding. Najee for, for Heisman. You might just have to keep jumping on Bama all fucking year because they're just crushing it against the spread. Roll tide, y'all. One or two for college. And pros, woo, 3 0, getting a little hot. Start off with the Jets plus nine versus the Raiders. We called this one. Jets wanted to win that one pretty bad, but they made it close and they covered. Cha Ching. Next one up Pats at Chargers. That one was a pick 'em. <laughs> That's a funny joke. Pats kicked their ass. Next up after that was Rams minus three at Cardinals. The Rams are fucking humming right now. Like they might take them to another Super Bowl. Who knows? 3 0 in NFL. Let's keep it fucking going for next week. The uniform watch for next week. We're jumping in the time machine and we're going back to the old age Renaissance Fair era. Northwestern, who's been pretty good this season but subsequently lost when we bet on them, is going with their gothic black unis with the black helmet. Pat Fitzgerald really doing a, a number with that program. They have brand new facilities. They're rolling out these brand new color schemes for their uniforms. Really like what they're doing. Keep an eye out for these this week. Next up is the strength conditioning coach spotlight of the week. This week is none other than Coach Ben Iannacchioni. I think it's an Italian last name. For, uh, forgive me if I butchered it. But this guy's a straight baller. Had stops at Boise with Chris Peterson. Uh, was with LSU when they won the Natty. Even uh, got a spot at Wyoming for a little bit and develop, developed Josh Allen to make him the QB that he is today. Coach Ben really knows his stuff, uh, really well-spoken, but also one of those guys that you can just trust in your foxhole. Let's take a look at, he's now at Kansas with Coach Les Miles. He followed him over, but let's take a look at Coach Ben, Ianakioni. 
it is I just want the best from every guy every single day. I want to coach every guy the same, and all I ask for is their best effort. Our speeds are up a lot from last year. Um, last year we had seven guys that were able to run 20 miles per hour. I want to say we're in the 20s now that can run 20 miles per hour. So it's pretty evident. But again, that's nothing that I've done. That's a testament to to our guys. I believe that people learn by observing. I was lucky enough to be at a place like Boise State, be able to observe a, a Chris Peterson. Um, I was lucky enough to be at LSU and observe a Coach Miles, observe a Coach Moffitt, and I've seen it before. Um, and because I've seen it, I'm lucky enough to know what it looks like. And now I need to do that for our young men. I need to embody it every day so they can observe me and, and learn from that and, and, and hopefully get this thing going in the right direction. Real good stuff from Coach Ben. Now let's jump into next week's picks. College, I'm feeling real good. There's a lot of gimmies this week. Knock on wood. Let's try to take advantage. First one up, we're going to remember last week, Virginia plus three at Virginia Tech. The Hokies are wiped out with COVID. Uh, Fuente isn't really doing what he thought he would be doing. Uh, on the flip side, Bronco Mendenhall has got Virginia fucking rolling. Like I said, they played BC real tough. They have that QB that's low-key kind of good. Um, they have a couple holes in their defense. They got kind of filled in with grad transfers and whatnot, so that takes care of the injury ordeal. And they've been playing well. We're going to Virginia plus three. Next up... Taking a trip to the Mountain West. Some of the games have been canceled, but this one we're jumping on San Jose State in a pick em versus Nevada. Like I said, Nevada's a little bit overvalued because that win it against the Dogs last week. They're good, but not that good. San Jose State has the juice. They have Starkle from AM. I personally hate San Jose State with every ounce of my body and my being. But I like money. San Jose State in a pick them. They're going to wax the floor with Nevada. And then last one up, we're going to jump to the Pac-12. This is a team I've had my eye on. See you. Go Boulder. Go Buffs. We're going Colorado minus 2.5 versus Utah. Utah has Bentley, that QB from South Carolina, the transfer. It seems like... They kind of took a step back so far. I know they lost uh, our guy Jalen Johnson, the number one corner in the draft to the Bears and the NFL. So they have a couple holes they need to fill. Bradley and I went to the Cowboys. They're good, but not that good. Colorado, there's something in the water. They're rolling right now. Buffs minus two and a half. And to jump down to NFL, we're going to end this with... Bengals plus three and a half versus the Cowboys. Cowboys make me sick to my stomach. I wish they would just tank so they can get one of these good QBs. Bengals plus three and a half home dogs. They don't have Burrow, but they're low key going to be able to just run the ball over the Cowboys. Bengals plus three and a half. Next up is Lions plus seven and a half versus Packers. This one makes me very nervous. We're going to try to catch the Packers on a lackadaisical uh, game where they're not going to really care about it compared to the uh, Lions. I feel like the Lions are going to be hungry. They don't really have the coach, so they're going to be throwing flea flickers and all kinds of shit like that. They have nothing to lose. Plus, they have DeAndre Swift back for the first time in a couple weeks. I'm taking Lions plus seven and a half. And now to end it, we're jumping back in Buffalo. Bills plus Bills minus one and a half versus the Steelers. This line has been kind of dropping, making me nervous. Steelers are coming off their third game in 11 days, which is a plus for the Bills. Bills are at home. Steelers have been traveling. Josh Allen doesn't lose at home. Bills minus one and a half. All right, y'all. Season's ending down. We're going to try to make this money before we're out of here for bowl season. Until next week. Peace.